Hey y'all, Ram Dino here. Coming at you from the northbound lane of I-85 in North Carolina. I'm getting ready to spend three hours out of my day that I do not have to go get fitted for a pack that I do not want from what is not a local outfitter since we don't have any local outfitters. Why am I getting ready to spend three hours to get a pack or to get fitted for a pack that I do not want? To find out, stick around. Well, we're back in the three hours or four hours turned into about five and a half hours because when you go to the outdoor store, you just got to browse, right? And then you got to eat after all that browsing because you get hungry. So in any case, we got the pack fitted, pack I didn't want, uh, and we're back. So let me tell you a little bit about the reason I had to go get the pack fitting. Uh, as you know that uh, in my earlier videos, um, about my section hike to Rock Gap, my equipment review that I pack a Exos 58 made by the Osprey Pack Company. And if you also know in my post hike video, I indicated I had a problem with it, and that was that there was a my right shoulder strap had a manufacturing defect. There was a piece of padding that was rolled under and then stitched that way, and that uh, produced uh, quite a bit of discomfort. Um, so. You know, I was only on it for on the trail for 30 miles, give or take 31 miles. And uh, so, you know, that wasn't that big a problem there. Uh, but when I start doing longer hikes, it will get to be a problem. And it's a brand new pack. Now, the problem I could have fixed at home with the needle and thread uh, if I'd wanted to. So, but I really shouldn't have to because that's a brand new pack. It's a manufacturing defect. I verified that with the uh with rei and i also verified it by going online and submitting a repair order sending them pictures uh to the offspray and they agreed it was a manufacturing defect told me to send the pack in so i did that to the tune of about fifty dollars for shipping and handling to get the pack back to them now one of the things on uh you have to go online and fill out their repair order form and one of the things it says in the repair order form is that your pack every effort will be made to repair your pack uh, so to me when i say every effort that means that uh, unless the pack has been sent through a wood chipper somewhere then they're going to do their best to repair that pack and a simple needle and thread removing some thread uh, stitching uh, unrolling the pad flattening it out stitching it back up is not that big a deal i mean after all they are a pack manufacturing company so surely they've got some scissors and thread and stitching machines around there that they can do that. And somebody with the wherewithal and the want to, to do that. Such is not the case. Another thing on their website is that it says that your pack could be, not would be, not will be, but could be recycled if we deem it unrepairable. So you're to check a box that says sentimental if you don't want it recycled and you want it to be sent back to you. Now, for me, the word sentimental has a different value than what it does for Osprey. A sentimental object to me is something like my child made for me in grade school or my dead grandfather left me his watch, something like that. That's sentimental value. But a pack that I've brand new, that I've only taken on one trip, really hasn't developed that sentimental value. If I'd had it for years, if I'd had it for a through hike, maybe it might have developed some sentimental value, but that's certainly not, my pack was not sentimental. Although I did not want my pack destroyed. So I received an email from them that said, my, pike, my pack was deemed unrepairable and would be recycled and they would be sending me uh, the new version of my pack. The old version is not available. Now, I bought my pack in the old version specifically because I knew the new version was coming out and I did not want the new version. The new version, in my opinion, is a giant leap backwards. It has, they have eliminated storage capacity and they have increased the overall weight. So to me, for an ultralight pack, that's a step backwards. My old pack was 2.4 ounces. The new pack, with the reduced storage capacity, the removed material for the hip belts comes in at 2.7 ounces. So three ounces, not a big deal, right? But the whole point of ultralight 
backpacking is you're trying to reduce weight. And so now I've added weight. Plus, I'm going to have to go to somebody like Z-Pax or an aftermarket people in order to uh, buy me some hip pouches to go on the new pack. So that really doesn't suit me, but I don't have a choice because they've informed me that my old pack has been recycled and I cannot have it back. So what that means is, uh, is that they have stripped it down of its usable parts and thrown the rest of it away. So they could have spent that labor stripping my pack down and taking out the usable parts on fixing the pack, but that's not what they chose to do. So think about this just for a minute. Recycling is good for the environment, all about recycling, but recycling comes at a cost. It's not free. It's not a net sum loss. Uh, it's not a net sum gain on what they're doing. Uh, it costs money to recycle. Somebody's got to spend labor to recycle, so it's not free. And the parts that they're cannibalizing for my pack, they're going to put on somebody else's pack that comes in there for repairs, or they may put on a new pack, uh, which in my opinion is wrong because people send their packs that are broken for some reason back to them to be repaired. They want them repaired with new parts. They don't want them repaired with old parts because the new parts are what failed to begin with. So I don't have a choice at this point. They've not given me a choice other than they can, I can pick out another one of their packs. They don't have lighter packs that are suitable. Uh, for that length of distance, their their lighter packs b below that are only carry about 10 to 15 pounds. Um, that's not. I'll never be able to get my weight down to where that could be my entire pack weight for a trip that I'm going to take 15 pounds. That's like a day pack. Um, so uh, what they've offered me is they've offered me the 48 Exos in the 2017, which is again less capacity but to make up for the monetary difference between the 48 and the 58 they said they'll send me a stuff sack and a pack cover okay so right there that tells me that Osprey is just more worried about monetary value than customer service because they placed a dollar value on what it would take to take my pack apart and fix it versus just sending me a new one right off the assembly line somewhere that's already been crunched out so giving me a stuff sack does not increase my volume. I can't carry a stuff sack on a, a trip. I've got my hands full with my tracking poles. So to me, that is not an answer. The answer would be to find me, the answer should have been send me back my pack. Don't destroy it until you at least ask me. My idea in sending back the pack was it was a simple fix. It was a fix that I could have done here at home myself. I just felt like that a pack company that manufactures packs could have easily fixed what I had wrong with the pack. Had I even thought for a second that they were going to destroy a perfectly good pack other than that one item, which I would have actually lived with, then I would have never even sent the pack back. So I know a lot of people sing the praise of Osprey. Uh, I'm sure they have their good points like every other pack company does. Um, but in this case, I felt like that I was really let down and that they did not place my customer service experience first. What they placed first was a dollar value upon how they could get out of this the cheapest way. So at this point, uh, you know, I've capitulated and told me to send me uh, the new pack, the new version of the 58, I'll have to spend another 60 bucks from Z-Pack to get me some hip pockets. Um, and, uh, and so we'll see where it goes. I have not received a reply back from that email that I sent Friday, today being Sunday. Uh, so we'll see where it goes and how soon they get me that pack back. When they do, I'll be sure and give a review of the pack and, and all the issues, good, bad, or indifferent, that I see with it compared to the old uh, Offspray 58. So until then, uh, be careful, particularly if you're looking at buying a pack, look at other companies, make sure who you're getting your pack from. It's very difficult to tell. I know you look at reviews and everybody's got great reviews and everybody's got bad reviews. Uh, I would say look at the most recent reviews, talk to your friends, get online and look at some videos and see what people are packing right now on the AT. 
or, or other trails and send them a comment in their comment box. People like comments. They love to dialogue on social media and YouTube. So find out how they like their pack and if they've had any of experiences uh, you know, with their pack manufacturer. So appreciate you watching. If you got anything out of this video, hit that like button down there. Appreciate it if you hit that big old red subscribe button. Subscribe to my channel and help me build this community. And until then, and as always, appreciate you, and we'll see you out there.